to call the meeting of the Village of Essex Junction Planning Commission for August 1st, 2019 to order. Um, before we start, uh, is there anybody in the room that would like to disclose any conflict of interest concerning anything that we're going to talk about tonight? And just a reminder, anybody who's going to be participating or in the audience, if you could make sure you sign in, that'd be great. Um, so right now, uh, so Robin, do we have any additions or changes? Yeah, I'd like to talk about proposed colors for the road rescue. OK. We can add that on after the. Um, conceptual plan review. All right. So first up, uh, we have the minutes to approve from May 16th, May 23rd, and June 6th. Have you guys all had a chance to take a look at those? Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> Do I hear a motion to, motion to approve, approve the minutes A, B, and C? So May moved. 16th, <laughs> May 23rd, and June 6th. Correct. I second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Okay. All right, now to the exciting portion. Let's see if I can do this the right way. I've only been the chair for. So long. Um, so we have to elect a chairperson and vice chair. Um, so I think the way this works is I need a motion from somebody. I nominate you to stay in your chair. So I think, no, correct me if I'm wrong, we need to do a motion to make that happen, correct? You, you need to make a motion. motion. I make a motion that David has voted. Do I hear a second to that? Second. Okay. okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Second. 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 Yeah. Stay right. Okay. So I would like to make a motion. So the chair will stay the same. And I would like to make a motion to um, elect John Alden to vice chair. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? All right. That was easier than I thought. Tough race. That was tough. <laughs> I was planning my strategy up there. Okay. Sorry, you can't get away with that. Uh, did, everybody, did everybody sign their ethics uh, review and hand it to Robin? One person did not hand it to me. We're in process. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. Content is subjective. So there's an item on here for the comprehensive plan, uh, public hearing on the comprehensive plan. That was a placeholder. That was a, were correct. Any substantive changes so, by the trustees, and there were not. That's correct. Just to make sure everybody understands, if the trustees had made any changes or recommendations to what we had sent them, we would be talking about it right now. But because that they did accept it, there's no nothing to uh, to talk about. Okay. Just so everybody understands that. All right. All right. On to the public, uh, public meeting conceptual plan review for a proposed mixed-use building and removal of existing buildings um, at <clears throat> excuse me, 9 and 11 Park Street. Are the applicants here? Excellent. Is that thing too noisy for anybody to move on? Do we want boards up for you guys as we're discussing? Sure. Yeah, that'd be nice. You can use the
that work for everybody? Okay. All right, before you guys start, can I have anyone who is going to uh, participate in the application raise their right hand? And I, uh, I hereby swear or affirm that the evidence I give in the cause under consideration shall be the whole truth and nothing but the truth under the pains and penalties of perjury. Mm -hmm. Okay. Robin, do you have anything you want to comment on before? I don't really. I mean, this conceptual plan room. Quite a list of stuff from the staff that it, it reviewed again and confirmed. But it seemed that this was conceptual. It was not unreasonable to leave that defined. Um, Interest as part of this are demolitions on the lanes, which were approved for demolition my first year here when somebody came forward with the hotel. Mm -hmm. So we're finally getting to that point for this summer. So gotcha. do we have to do anything specific to the demolition? Or is it just rolled into the... It's just rolled into the world. Okay. All right, gentlemen. Okay, well, we're here. Um, I'm, I'm from Rabbit Architects. My name is Tyler. This is Greg. We're working with Mylot Real Estate and Lamro and Dickinson for the 9 and 11 Park Street project, um, which is obviously right across the street or right down the street. Um, we we're proposing to have a mixed-use building that consists of approximately 9,000 square feet of, of commercial space on the first floor, and the upper three floors are all studio apartments, uh, 48 studio apartments. We're proposing to have below grade parking, surface parking, as well as an elevated deck, which we feel will help to relieve some of the parking pressures that are in that area. Uh, you know, we've really tried to do what your town plan is looking for in this area with the mixed use and also regionally trying to consolidate development into these urban areas and provide mixed use to get some uh, diversity into the areas. So just, just to add here, this is Park Terrace yep. on the north side of the site. The uh, recently completed building right across the street for Pearl Street is right here. And, um, and then, of course, here's Park Street. There's a private road that goes in back of the project site here. And, um, and the movements on Park Terrace have been limited in the past by other permit actions. Just out for an inch into that. And just to add one other thing, uh, at Park Terrace, it necked down, to, I believe, two feet at Park Street. And we're proposing to open that intersection up so it's a full 24 foot intersection. You know, I have a co worker that works or that lives nearby, and he just says, you know, that that intersection's always been difficult to turn out of. So we think that's going to be advantageous as well. I will say that I spoke to a few of um, the residents on Park Terrace prior to seeing this plan, and they had said that they'd always wanted the intersection with Park Terrace and Park Street to be wider. Oh, it's terrible. Yeah, it's it's tough. It's got some challenges. Yeah, they happened to. Have, they also did mention the fact that they're putting a sidewalk in, uh, side side yep. park terrace, north side of the building, which will also help. Uh, <coughs> is uh, Mr. Henson going to give us a civil tour, or is that uh, sure. would that include the sidewalk? Sure. I don't want you to be sitting there and not get get to join the party here. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Holmes. Mr. Vice Chair. Um, so yeah, as this gentleman had said, Park Terrace right now is about 20, 20 to 22 feet wide. Um, it will stay that width to the west of this project, um, but as it approaches Park Street, it will widen out to be a full 24 foot wide village street. Um, we're going to accomplish that in two. We'll pull this existing curbing back a couple of feet and then just shift our sideline, anything we're doing will shift to the south to create that 
in addition to letting people come in and out, it will also make it easier for truck traffic, traffic to serve both of these buildings. Um, there will be a new five foot wide concrete sidewalk um, that will allow people to park here and have a dedicated sidewalk to get down to Park Street. Uh, there'll be another one on this side of the development. So anybody who's parking here or the residents of this new building that's almost done uh, will be able to walk down and, and have a good way to get down to Park Street. Um, this will be a shared driveway that will serve this project um, as well as this elderly housing project back there. Um, it's a, wide enough as a two-way driveway. Uh, there will be a ramp down right here to uh, below ground parking. Um, this will. I believe that's actually labeled wrong, Doug, where down should be the northerly ramp. Southerly ramp is actually going up to the upper level parking. Um, it is. Mm -hmm. So okay, so the one that's on yeah, we don't, yeah. Okay, so the one that's on the south is going to go up. Up? Yeah. Correct. Not down. Yeah. Correct. Okay, so that means everything inside is also flipped or switched, correct? Yes. Okay. Inside. So I'm not, it's inside so the, the ramp. Pack. The ramp this ramp will come up to the upper deck and right. Uh, yeah, no, that'll go up, um, and then this will be going down to the lower, the underground part. So if you look at, I don't know if you guys have a copy of yeah. this SK2, it's mm -hmm. something that's, you know, not civil worthy, but it gives, uh, <laughs> I, I'll say that the, have the, the, parking deck is, the parking section of this was a little tricky to, figure out, so we'll, we'll be looking for, we'll, we'll talk about that in a minute. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there will be, in, in this area, we haven't done the full design yet, but in this area, uh, there will be an underground uh, stormwater treatment facility called infiltrators. Um, we can't make it too deep because the groundwater is not very deep in this area. Um, but, but it's I, under the below grade parking lot. Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And then the, the, there'll be a set of stairs from this sidewalk up to this level because Park Terrace climbs the whole way. And this driveway climbs the whole way to get up to here. Um, so this deck will be, the, the surface parking will be at grade here. The, this will be a, a, a grass slope between this curb for the parking lot and the, the uh, sidewalk. Um, what else would you like to know, Jim? Uh, well, it relates more to the parking garage, so we'll, uh, I don't know who the appropriate person is there. Um, and who's going to describe the, the front um, raised plaza and the stairs and all that? That's, that's not you, that's these okay, guys. Well, well, well you, right. this is the tree guy, right? No, yeah. uh, civil engineer. Civil engineer. Yeah, ask him right. about the pipes and the well, stormwater. Well, actually, no, I'm more concerned about the citizens that I didn't see here. Um, make sure these trees stay alive, because there's a lot of concrete and not a whole lot of green space. Right. So. Well, there also might be a parking deck. That I, well, that's yeah, <laughs> there, there could be. Okay, but I mean, as I was looking at, was it sheet? No, SKP2, and what's this other one? This is uh, sheet three, proposed gradient landscaping plan. We've got trees that are well, next. Yeah, well, yeah, and yeah, yeah, H3. Um, there's two trees that are planted in the left, there, left, there. left, on, next to the, the new alley or driveway. Hmm. Okay, there are two trees in there. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So tell me about those. Because, um, I, I, quite frankly, I mean, I'm, I'm trees. Well, it says trees. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, that is the symbol I'm reading. 
That so is, those are proposed to be trees. Trees. Okay. Right. So what level are those on? Because isn't that those will be on surface level. Surface level. Right. The parking ends here, underground. The okay. trees were back here. That, okay. That's the part that's a little tricky. Is the there's no connection between the parking drawings and the right. site plan, so it's hard to tell where the yeah, that's where they stop well, and stop. What we'll do with the, for the final here, we'll do a cross section right through here. That's a good so idea. So that you'll see okay. lower level, here's the wall, here's the ground level, yeah. here are the trees, and here's the center. Yeah. Okay. That, and you, that, you may, but, maybe that there's a clarify. dotted, you know, maybe there's a, well, you'll have a landscaping plan, right, that's different from this? Slightly, yes. Is that, you know, rendered up or done something, the landscape architect will do something, right? Yeah. Anyway, one of the site plans should include the front, you know, the perimeter of the garage or the deck, so that we get where that exists in rel in relation to the rest. Okay. Well, I will it say could be on your plan as long as we don't do no, it right. for piping or something. Right. You know, yeah. This plan is certainly more conceptual in nature than the civil plan. It's just to provide. The second deck wasn't shown on the civil plan, so this is the reason that this yeah. was added into the set. Well, you got three levels to show, and he's only correct. Going to show one of them at the moment, so yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, so my next question is civil: is is that I believe on the current plan, or or that was approved by the planning commission for the what is now the up ramp is currently being put in as a. I saw it yesterday as a gravel driveway. So, and I understand that there's supposed to be more um, infiltration slots, okay, that are going out on. So how does that work in this project? Those go away. Those go away. That, those were installed on behalf of this project. Yes. Um, but when this landowner sold this piece, yes. part of the plan was that whatever from this point on, whatever this owner puts in will be removed to serve this project. So all of this, this stormwater system will handle everything that this project develops, as well as this. Uh, so, so interesting. Go ahead. Okay, so those current infiltration cells that are under that road right now <clears throat> yes. are going to be removed? Yes. Can they be utilized? We hope so. We don't know. Uh, okay. Uh, that's, it'll depend on, to a certain extent, obviously, it will depend on the contractor who removes them. They well, uh, if they remove them carefully, then yes, we hope that they will be reusable. I think that would be helpful to include on the demolition plan just so that we can all keep track of it. And then you'll have to give the calculations to the engineer so that they can. All right. Sign off on yeah, you've got the capacities as well as the state with their okay. store permit. Right. Excellent. Okay. And um, the are you got you've got more than I? No, I, I, I'll I'll wait. Go ahead. Uh, well, uh, Doug's office also put together a lot of parking and traffic studies, and as long as you're right there talking about the roads, maybe you can just flesh out the, I mean, there's there's more to the vehicle circulation than we're seeing on this because you're now tying into the spur that goes across the, uh, the east side of the senior housing, and then that ties into uh, Park Street School, right? It does. So yeah. um, what do you see as the relationship between that um, you know, so the park terrace is two-way, and this new piece at the west side of uh, your property is two-way. Yes, yes. And and it's is it also two-way by the senior housing? No, Gage is one way. That's one way. One, one way to come in, in on school on the school street. Like it's one way. Yeah, I thought it was out going out that way. Right. That was what the school district said when they were the Yeah, so all the traffic going to the senior housing comes up Park Terrace and picks the new corner, and right? That's what we think. And 
that's fine. Yeah. And and once, I mean, uh, so people coming out of your uh, parking area will either they can actually go either way. Right? Yes. They could go the right or left. Yeah. Excellent. Carry on. I think we'll didn't know if you were coming into a further question. No, no, I just want to understand it because uh, it, was, it might be helpful to include the rest of that circulation in, in some <coughs> smaller plan, but uh, just so you can remind everybody. But it sounds like you got to figure it out. We will. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I, we've kind of hit on the high spot so far, so I'm not sure there's a whole lot more for me to talk about. All right. Um, other than address questions. So I'll concrete side bumps. Um, in terms of the scalability of the sidewalk <coughs> are on the on the Park Street uh, side, are we kind of mirroring, you know, the same look? It's it's it, yeah, yeah. It's a little, it's a little bit like Fourth Pearl Street. That the sidewalk sounds wide. There, there's more restrictions on this site, but again, the applicants work for the village and respond very positively to what we ask them. Okay. Um. Okay. So speaking of the sidewalk that's on the south side, there's I'm not sure which one of you guys to ask. This is compost recycling and trash bins. How are those? accessed are those rolling out to the street correct so Myers or whoever the trash company I spoke specifically with Myers regarding the size and ability of them to be able to move them and as long as they have a four or five foot sidewalk they can open the gate bring the I can't remember if it's a four yard or three yard container I can't even remember exactly what they are but they will roll those down the sidewalk to the truck that would be able to back up okay. into the parking lot. And that's the sidewalk labeled ramp right now on the drawing? Is that which the, I guess? No, no. <coughs> it, I, just directly to the east of where those bins are showing. You yeah. can see the gates on the plan. Oh, yeah. And, and that's a great it is, it says yeah. ramp. Right there. What's that? Yeah. I'm, I'm on the labor skipping and grading plan. And it says ramp. 345. Yeah, it does say ramp. Six on, no. It doesn't say that on the if, site. Too. If it is a ramp, you're looking at you know less than half a foot from one side of that uh, storage container to the other, looking at the spot elevations that are there. What is the distance between the parking garage and, and the building? There's a five foot sidewalk. Five and foot. And the, yes. the thing is the the truck that they're gonna dump these into has to be kind of nearby, right? I mean Well that's why I asked. If you've got a five foot sidewalk meeting a five foot sidewalk. Yeah, but where's the truck? The truck So the intent is that the truck would back up down the the drive lane adjacent to the ramp that's going down. And then they would get out and roll the containers. Okay. So it's on the property to the south. Depending on the company, they may use a front motor. They don't like to get out of there. So yeah, oh, I know they don't like it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it 
Okay. Any other questions, guys? Let's just get to start. Um, let's keep it moving. <laughs> I, I'm a little interested in what really happens along the, uh, let's say, the business end of the parking area. So um, uh, the west side of the property, so you've got a new street there. And we're seeing the ground level plan, which uh, it's all street from the property line over to uh, the edge of the, of the parking area. It's, we can't really tell where the parking garage sits on that. It's a little tricky. Um, I've got a little island with some trees on it. So I've got, a, I've got an in and an out here, kind of a, in two places before I get to use it, the ramps. I've got an island with two trees. And all the rest of that is just paved. There's no sidewalk for walking that way. So not, not through here. No, not through this here. is not a street. This is a driveway. This is a driveway. We don't, we don't want people That will not be offered or accepted by the so Anybody coming from the senior area has a sidewalk to get down to Park Street. They can walk right down there. And yes. anybody who's on the other end is walking on the new sidewalk down to Park Street. So yep. uh, if they're wanting to go the other way for whatever reason, they, they're in the driveway. Um, and we don't have any elevations or any other descriptions of the parking garage vertical yet, right? Currently, no. We're working, it's, we do have a structural engineer that's working on it, and that's going to be really the first step to... Uh, so can we imagine there's a, at the ground level, you've either got legs or you've got some wall or something that separates the parking from the... Driveway. Correct. We're certainly going to have columns at the very least, yeah. and um, it's. Uh, I'll just say at the moment, my thought is that that's an opportunity to integrate that edge of the structure in a way that is pleasing, right? So it's still a driveway. It's still not the you know front end of anything, but some people are going to see it, and Sorry. everyone driving by will <coughs> see it, and. It might be that the two trees there are uh, expanded upon with some treatment that happens along that side. And again, I don't know what material is it left concrete? Is it got a brick face on it? Is it got you know what does it really look like? Um, I know you haven't really gotten to that yet, but uh, I think that's going to be a, an issue for the surrounding area. Just make sure that's been dealt with and not left uh, undealt with. Certainly well. A lot of it's going to depend on the final design and how much space is actually there to yeah. cover. Because right. it, it is going to be a lot of open space because of under, that's yeah. where the cars are coming in yeah. coming the only one from, from the ground level. Yeah. So what is actually there to be covered that will be determined the final design. Just and from a comfort standpoint, an open parking garage typically is more comfortable for someone being inside there. So having yeah, it's pretty as far interesting. As, as far as viewing and... I want to say I'm, I'm, I'm really impressed that you're going to be able to get that much parking in because that's a huge benefit to the, uh, you know, to the project and to the surrounding yeah, it is. uses. Um, I don't know if it's appropriate to ask you about how you see the use working because I know 4 Park Street has need of more parking at certain times and this has, uh, with 80 seven spaces. I believe that's correct. Uh, and you've only got 48 studio apartments, so theoretically you may only have 30 cars assigned. You know, not everybody may have a car, and certainly there are a few people that have more than one. Uh, regulation notwithstanding, I think the parking uh, piece that was done by Roger is pretty interesting. Um, we've just finished a similar project in downtown Burlington where we're well under two two spaces per unit, so uh, especially when you start looking at the shared part of that. Mm -hmm. I did my own quick calculations on your parking study. Um, on paper, your demand is a hundred and something, right? And you're providing 87, but once you look at the shared number, it's down at 47. Yeah. And 
and so I figured that the right number was actually, I, uh, well, I, I came up with it on my own at 88, so the 87 I think is ideal. I just think I, I appreciate that that much parking is there. Um, we probably don't have as sophisticated an analysis tool uh, like Burlington did to actually figure out how all that's going to work, but Roger's analysis does a great job in laying out the demand, laying out the shared, uh, you know, parking arrangement for times of day and all that, and if, if you believe those numbers, you know, you may have significant uh, additional parking available uh, at most times of the day uh, to do something with, and uh, you know, I think that's that's pretty nice. Um, it's, it's certainly an incentive to the commercial property as well to yeah. have open parking that that's could be and, accessible to. You know, right. much of the community is not going to even know it's there. Uh, some people will, and that's what I'm saying. I think you just pay a little bit of attention to what that uh, back side it, it looks like. Like that word will spread quickly. It, it could, you know. There's yeah. an available spot here. <laughs> well, it's a, maybe a management thing. I mean, there's not going to be a blue sign with a P on it down uh, Park Street, is there? I mean, this is, no. we don't know who's no. using this yet or how it's operated, but you guys may want to think about, about that a little bit because it is, uh, like most people don't know, there's 65 spaces right here and they're there. Uh, so, uh, municipal space. So anyway, it's just something to think about. Uh, I was really excited about the parking. I think you, uh, you know, it's a nice uh, thing to do for that spot. Um, anybody else on? Well, I, I was given that we have design control in this area. Um, my concern is, while you're putting this together, is what what is what is the face going to be like on Park Terrace. What is the face going to be like um, you know, to the neighbor to the south? Okay, because that 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 building will indeed see that parking garage. In fact, if if that property does get developed to four stories, they will be looking into that parking lot. Um, so I guess I will be be looking for um, how is that being portrayed and designed. Because it isn't just slabs and concrete there. Okay, I'm going to expect something that's nice looking. Okay, um, don't ask me how to describe nice looking. Um, but you know, it's you know I'm not looking for raw cement. Okay, that's not been tailored or anything. Because um, I did go over and look yesterday and said, okay, if I imagine a two-story cement structure as I'm looking at from the back of the four Pearl Street parking lot toward the senior center, what am I, what's going to be interrupted? How much of that senior, senior building am I going to see? You know, and what are they going to see as I'm standing on the corner in their parking lot? Okay, what am I going to be seeing down this way? Okay, what am I looking at? Okay, and knowing that there's at least 24 probably Tenants that will be looking at that parking lot from the top of their building, you know, from their windows. So it's, you know, what's it going to look like? What, what, all I can tell you right yeah, now I'm not, is, is this, as I said before, there's a, there's a green space in here. So that will be a mixture of grass and trees and shrubs. I can't tell you what species yet, but that's not my. I cut them down. I don't I'd, I'd offer a couple things to uh, to help you feel better about this. When, number one is when we did four Pearl Street, we didn't assume there was a front side and back side of the building. I think whether or not you care for the traditional design, I think the back side materials are precisely as nice as the front side mm -hmm. materials. And that would be the case here as well. Okay. And I think one thing we can offer next time we come back is we, you know, we are really good at 3D visualizations. And the ones that we provided for for Pearl Street proved to be really accurate in terms of how the how the building integrated into its context. So you know when we come back for final, we'll bring some 3D graphic images to to help you understand that. Um, we understand that for the customers of our retail people and the tenants who live in this building, 
the garage is really how they're going to approach the building every day. So I think we're all on the same page here. We just need to illustrate what you and John are both saying, I think, in different ways. Um, so we'll come back with some 3D stuff so you can really see how it works. Uh, with, with one level of elevated deck, it's not going to be like a looming parking garage, yeah. but there is a design solution to be had there. And, and, um, and we'll detail that more fully moving forward. Awesome. Thanks, Good. Yeah, that was going to be my, my big request, just following in some of the other projects we've seen. The, the really the 3D visualizations, especially in a place where we have uh, over, oversight over design yeah. and colors, is really important and it helps us. It makes it a lot easier to see. We will. We oh, will yeah, do that. that. Fits, that makes sense. Um, and along those lines, kind of what John was saying about the, the, the uh, west side of the building, what are your plans along the Nath property? To, is there a visual buffer plan there? Like, what's that, that side of the lot? Look like? uh, at this point, we're proposing, uh, we, I, I will tell you this has changed already a little bit. Um, so we actually have added in a, a two foot, really by, by necessity as much as anything else. We've, we've moved this curb line this way a couple of feet, um, which I'll have to chat with our landscaper and ask him whether that's enough of a green space to get any sort of shrub to or, I mean, I hate to put up a stockade fence, um, but we will have a couple of feet of green there before the curb and then the driveway. Um, I can't tell you more than that. Right have now. you talked to the property owner at all to see what their thoughts might be? I have not yet, no. Fence or trees or no. shrubs or? No, have not yet, but we will. <clears throat> All right, should we get on to the building now? Sure. We, we only have black and whites. I don't know if we have the color somewhere, but uh, we might have them. Where do I see the brick samples? Are I think, I think we have all the materials with us. <laughs> Okay, well, obviously we are in historic area for the village and we try to pick up on massing and rhythm that we've seen you know, just historically. Um, material wise, the lower level is mostly brick, you know, something similar to what we did at 4 Pearl Street with sections of the building broken, broken up with a product called Nichiha, which is a concrete or cementish siding. It's a, kind of like a panel. It goes on almost, I think the sheets are 16 by, by 60 inches, something like that. So it's a large uh, panel system. And that would be in these Bays that kind of break up the three masses. Um, above those broken masses, we have a vertical, it's also a Nichiha panel. It would be a custom gray color, um, darker than the, the base, but um, still in that gray family, trying to have that recede behind the the main, the three main portions of the building. The upper sections are going to be lap siding, a hardy or, or similar, we're proposing hardy with which had larger samples for you guys to see, but uh, so the darker, the lower section and the lower section in the middle and the two outside wings would be this, which is called aged pewter. And the upper section in the middle is proposed to be this Monterey Tope, so it's staying in the same family. Um, 
although it is you know a darker palette than what we see much of at, at Fort Pearl Street, it still has uh, the, the white windows and the white trim. We're looking to have a, a black or a dark bronze storefront system along the entire lower floor. You know, we're just really trying to break the building up so it doesn't read as one large mass. Uh, it may have a little more work to do on that. Uh, just looking at it from here, assuming those colors are somewhat uh, respect, uh, respective to what you're describing, it looks like uh, the base, I've got a nice strong brick base and then I've got a larger gray mass above it and that's what I'm reading. I don't see that the breaking up is yeah. happening quite the same way. You know, if it's all shades of gray then yes. you're going to read as... See these are really, you know, like a... It's really much more brown on on these the three main masses with gray being in between. It, you know, I, I so told this is going to be back to when the, the 3D rendering is going right. to really bring this out. You, 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 you get this in digital, the colors will come be much you know, more clear. I make a, a draw, I do it on the computer, I send it to someone to print it, and know, it I comes out. So sense. I have, you know, it, I'm just like, I, or, yeah, I so know, it doesn't come out the way uh, I want it to, to say the least. Crazy to see what the printed version looks like compared to what. <laughs> on the screen. Yeah. Yes. Uh, okay, good. That's good to know. But um, we we're certainly want to work with you and. and I think we all want the same result in the end, certainly. And in the drawing, again, I'm not sure how this was reading, but there's the the horizontal band between the the first commercial floor and the apartments above seems a little understated in this. Just you know, in terms of you a really heavy cornice up top, you've got some other strong horizontals, and then that that band I don't know, it could just be the shading or the Maybe it's being rendered in brick here, but it, it's not really consistently strong across the whole base. As far as here? Yeah. Where it's breaking. Yeah. Here. So I, I see what you're saying where you're carrying this. Maybe maybe some of this has to go away so you don't read it coming through. And this really receives back. That's what we want to do is have these sections receive back. I, I'm just, I, I, I want you to think about what you know, are you trying to say I've got a base and I've got everything else, in which case you might want to strengthen that. If you're not trying to say that you really want to play with the pieces right. more, then maybe it's fine. And again, I think with a uh, you know, different style of rendering or the, the 3D piece is going to really help us all see that. I think it'll help us all, yeah, for sure. Um, can you tell me about the fenestration on the um, north side, because it's totally different than uh, what I'm seeing on the, you know, just in terms of uh, proportions of narrow slots, a lot of verticality, and I get to the north side, and I'm guessing the south side is similar. Sure. Um, they're just more sort of rectangles. So it's kind right. of where four, you know, these windows here in the, on the two, not in the middle, can be where the hallway is, and those windows are all driven by the fact that these windows here are, are going to be in the kitchen. So they're going to be up over a sink. So obviously we're not going to get a full size window there. And just to not have too many things going on, those three sections are all using the same windows. Where on the outside, we're back <coughs> in, into the living room area. But well, just from the exterior side, it looks like you change the style. You know, and it, it, just if that's what you're intending, that's maybe okay. Um, we're still in a historic district. We're still in downtown. We still have a, a certain pattern and rhythm that wants to come around the corner and yep. maybe be a little more consistent. Um, but uh, you know, I, I understand what you're doing there. But if you might want to, instead of what reads as one big window, maybe it has a fair enough something for like a fridge. Yeah, or something, or like, something that. like that. Yeah. Okay, fair enough.
Um, and uh, I'm back on the east elevation, and I'm looking at the, what I'm, I'm thinking are little brackets. Uh, but actually, it's, if I look at the um, north elevation there, they actually extend out quite a bit. Um, is that a breeze soleil or some kind of a... It's a canopy. We have not yet selected it. We're hoping that it's going to be something we're going to be able to, uh, you know, select as, you know, it's not a designed element. It's a, it's a chosen element that already exists somewhere. Yeah. We have not yet yeah. selected I'll, I'll just say that um, comparing to Ford Park, uh, my almost the only thing I would wish was a little stronger on that building are the brackets that hold up the. Sir, they, they, they seem just a little underwhelming. And, and we all feel the same way. Uh, that's, that's one of those phone calls where somebody found a substitution <laughs> and, and something that's supposed to be this big is. Yeah. It's always I, bothering I, us I too. I think that the floor <laughs> system got deeper there than it was anticipated. So the brackets had to get smaller on Fort Pro Street, but yeah. we all. Um, so uh, I guess what I'm saying is that it, on this building, if you are paying attention to those proportions, um, you know we can see what happens there. And see Certainly, it it's it's a very different yeah. uh, canopy. We don't have the mass of the building overhanging as we do on Fort Pro Street. It's it's, we're looking to have a glass canopy that's overhanging, so it kind of goes away in some ways. Uh, so metal and glass kind that's of. Yeah. What, that's kind of what. Nice. Uh, my mind. All right. So uh, anyone mm -hmm. that else? The, the the cornice pieces are pretty big. I'll just say that's just my own personal feeling. There, there's a lot, especially on the two ends. The that's a lot of what we we'll read as a cap. Mm -hmm. I like the way the windows are arched up in the middle. I think that is going to be a signature, uh, you know, something uh, image for that building. Sure. Uh, and I'm just I'm be interested to know, like, how does the material really work? Are there joints in that? Is it all one big piece, or you know, is it fiberglass? Is it, you know, how does that really get? Get uh, handled because uh, it's it's a pretty good chunk of material that you're showing. There. Are you looking for a smaller cornice? I'm not sure. I, I, I think that um, you know the projects that we've seen. Uh, you know, we're all referencing back to the Brownell building, which is a very strong, big cornice up there. But there's quite a lot of detail to it. Um, some of the recently approved projects um, across the street have uh, also. Provided a, a heavy cornice. Uh, I mean, the one across the street for four pearls, not, I, mean, I would probably say it's probably less than this. Okay. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> I'm not trying to say that it's too heavy. No, no, no. I'm just trying to figure out how it really, uh, I mean, a lot of times, big, if it's kind of flat, doesn't go as far as. A little bit smaller, but a little more detail, mm -hmm. and I, it just seems like it. Uh, I just don't know quite how it's gonna flesh out yet. It, I read it. I'm expecting that it's fabricated in fiberglass or something, and I don't metal. I, I, I don't. know. Just looking for a little more information on that. Yeah, we have not yet nailed down exactly you know there's multiple ways to do it you could have something a form made where it does make it out of fiberglass you could skin it with you know a, a sheet good kind of thing like a you know like a hardy panel something along those lines but i think again once we get into the 3d perspective we'll be able to tweak it and look at it different ways and and uh, hopefully come up with something that might be a little more <coughs> I'll say decoration that happens on that somehow and, well, and I mean, helps to bring some scale to it. This cornice does not have the details, the, the, the posts and all kinds of things that would tell me if it was wood that it was helping hold it together. I don't see that in here, but I'm assuming that those little details, okay, that are, okay, 
case, in this case, and in the brown old block, are there. We have the, the wavy lines or the, or the vertical pieces that are telling me it's, it's keeping together. This is so plain Jane. And I, you know, I guess I'm looking for something that of those detailed pieces for the next, next drawing. Sure. Um, this building, I, am, I see the grays. I see this gray. I see that color there. Um, my first impression is kind of like it's going to, somebody's going to say, well, I'm going down to the gray building. And so if that's, if that's the, the, the idea that you want to give, yeah, you know, that's one down to the gray this building. really shouldn't read as gray. That's well, gray brown. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, so I think I think let's just remember we've said it like five times now. We need to have a 3D version that everybody can see, and it'll you know, it'll be more clear how everything looks. So well, this is what we have today, but. You know, if right. we're looking for more detail in the corners. Oh, I appreciate like that. that. I, I well, understand what you're saying. I'd rather, I'd rather have them here now. I mean, I know that I can see that the vertical um, piece here with the brick, okay, that you've got the layers and whatnot, but you can't see that texture in, in this black and white that we've got. I can see, um, see okay, I'm sure if I went over there, I could see more of the vertical pieces for the headers um, in the brick that go between courses. Um, so I guess I'm looking for that, those, those, old, those old style pieces that told me right. this is how big things are and gave me that human scale piece that I guess what I'm, I'm looking to see that's there. So I can't see that in this drawing, but I'm sure that the next one will t tell me about the vertical bricks. Right. Um, I I, so. I, so, I, so you're not reading any of the... Different. It's almost reading like a, a flat Not especially block. well I'm, in this black and white. I can see that on a reduced size, but certainly um, doesn't happen. But I can make some educated you know, assumptions on, on that vertical course of, of bricks or brick picture uh, of what's going on there, which you can't see. And I doubt, I agree no, with you, John. No, there's nothing, it's not, right. yeah, it's, it's okay. yeah, well, yeah. and I don't see, other than the fact that it goes from brick to gray. You know, that, that vertical course of brick, okay, in this case is textured. I'm just, are we going, actually going with bricks or are we going with some treatments? Well, I got bricks. I this, is bricks all, this is all brick here, here, here. This would be this kind of a panel system between. Um, I mean, that, that would give me those, those texture cues that I can't really see on there. Yeah, uh, I think you know it's hard to read this in its current state and get what he's telling us. So we're hearing one thing, we're seeing something else. Right. Sure. And and I think we want to all get a little more comfortable that we're understanding what you're really doing there, and, and that it reads that way. Because um, it's, I mean, grays are pretty popular right now. There's a lot of people using gray siding of various types um, as either large portion of their building or accents or something. And, um, while it may not necessarily be historic, uh, it's not an inappropriate use. And I just think we want to figure out how that looks. Because from where we're sitting, it looks like uh, a one story that looks normal, historic, red brick, you know, even with the nice interruptions of material is fine. And then the whole rest of it is reading on one thing. Okay. And and I uh, appreciate that you're telling us it's not really like that, but until we have the evidence to to see that, we're a little stuck. Okay. Yeah. Good. Um, I'm ready to move on. You're ready to move I'm on. I'm not going to dwell on it anymore. Right. <laughs> Anybody else? I'm good. David, I'm good. Have a comment? I'm good. I have. I I could comment if you want me to, but I'm good. Steve, anything else? Um, I, I guess I have just a general question that's maybe directed towards us as well as you guys. There's a lot of uh, a lot of proposed developments that we have really focused on the studios or the small one bedrooms. Is that just something that the market's seeing now? I mean, where are the families living in, in these apartment buildings? Are we just not seeing that? Is that not part of the, the demographic? Or it's it's got a lot to do with like cost of rentals right. and and. Uh, you know, this is fairly intensive development on a small lot, but, but uh, um, 
as the price of two bedrooms has gone up and up, and we'll see related couples moving in one bedrooms. And so, so at, the, at the lowest rental tiers in the market rate rents, there's not a lot of stuff available. Um, next door, we have units that are, you know, twos. There's a couple of really fantastic penthouse things with the round windows. Um, so there are bigger buildings next door, but, but uh, we're trying to reach into a segment of the marketplace that's just not happening. Um, we finished a project called Larkin Terrace on Shelburne Road down by McDonald's, and then that's all one bedrooms for a lot of the same reasons. So it's workforce housing, it's on a bus line, uh, so you can live there and afford the rent and not necessarily have to have a car. Um, so, so that's the strategy, I think, is, is that's an unmet need, and we think there's a lot of rental potential there. Yeah, I think it's great. I think it's really needed, too. That's, that's, nice. that's echoed in all the research that we yep. heard from the housing people. Yeah, that's, that's correct. That yep. Basically, one-bedroom apartments you can't find them. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We're, we're building, a, uh, we're just down the street right now, we're building 31 one-bedroom units. And, and the building doesn't open until October, and we're happy. Yeah. Nice. So Excellent. It's truly, you know, and this also, too, by, you know, it is an increased density, but as we're always saying, whether it be within a building or itself or within a neighborhood, increasing the density does allow us to bring costs down. Um, and that's truly what we're trying to do here is not only providing uh, not only providing what is desirable as far as a layout goes but also trying to hit a you know try to hit uh, as far as new construction goes uh, try to hit a, uh, a desirable price point uh, as well and also smaller units like this allow us to do actually nicer things in the units granite countertops, tiled showers, including washer and dryers in every unit. Um, so that's, you know, and then all, you know, all tiled bathrooms, wood laminate flooring, tiled backsplashes in the kitchens. So these are all kind of things that we're, we're trying to do to, to, uh, to, to try to uh, kind of, I don't want to say spruce up the units, but to, to try to, uh, you know, to increase the desirability. So oh, um, just remind me, did you say they're all studio apartments or? They're, they're all studios. They're all studios. Yeah, There's right. no, did the bedroom is in the same room as everything? No, what we have a couple different designs um, so that we're calling it a studio, but we, what we've done uh, is uh, there's kind of a pseudo bedroom uh, in the unit, but what we're gonna do is design it with pocket doors on two of the sides. So that essentially, if you want to, you can close them, and it could be a bedroom. Or if you want, open them up, and the doors disappear, and then it almost opens up to the whole living room, kitchen area. So it really expands the, the, the size of it. For people who don't want that, and they want just the full-on, open, you know, the style of the old Murphy bed and that kind of stuff, then there's gonna there is a design that it's just it's just wide open. We're looking at doing that half and half. Right. Right. Cool. Excellent. Um, the only, uh, the last question I had was um, related to the interface with Park Street and the uh, raised front platform that takes, uh, you know, gives you a little sort of private, your own plaza, patio, if you will, that's not necessarily the sidewalk but the sharing space. Um, I, the staff report talking about a fountain and I just wanted to know uh, you know, how do you guys see that space working and whether you had any comments on the staff report? I, I don't, you know, I've never had much luck with fountain, but, um, you know, and I, I think I think what we're trying to do at Fort Pearl is you do have the wider, you know, the wider area next to the building, which is, is basically hoping to uh, just promote uh, the traffic up by the building itself. We have benches and everything on it, as well as the trees that are growing there, and it promotes people to hang out there and sit and, and enjoy enjoy the outside in front of the building. I think, uh, from what I've heard just recently today, that uh, Park Street Cuts is planning kind of a open house celebration for their first year in business. Uh, they're talking about 95 X or a radio station or something setting up kind of out front. This is just what I've heard. I don't know if they, how far they've taken it, but that type of you know expanding the, the, the usable space in front of the building which was the goal here because we did push that building back at the request of staff 
right. to, to create a kind of a promenade area that, that, that is uh, inviting to, to the general public. And I think that's what you're going to want. You know, you want eventually all the way down the street. Yes. Um, I you know. I, I really like the concept, and I think the businesses that are in the, the lower level that are going to be able to take advantage of that yeah. whole space and the various interactions, you don't necessarily all want to be right on the sidewalk with everybody going by, but, but that just a little bit of a, of a separation would be great. So, yeah. um, and well, I, I, th I think eventually here, and in, in the goal of everything going on is more you know more units here right right at the central part of, of the five corners and that's going to only help to spur the commercial growth too because the day will follow when the people show up well let me second attempt here at the moment you have four sets of steps up to the elevated plaza on either way and i can see why you want the steps because they're opposite doors into the building the i was just trying to Lift it a little bit, change it a little bit. I mean, it's great to have wider sidewalks and trees and benches, but can we have something else? If you really don't want to use a fountain, can you still take the steps out and bring the upper plaza out to where that was? You're sitting in the center here. Yeah, create a cluster of trees, something that people could sit underneath. So sure. it just breaks it up and gives people something extra. I'd, you know, I'd thought it could have been a little simple fountain that just you know, went up a foot spilled over at the front, dropped down into a catch basin at street level, and maybe there'd be a little seat there. You, know. you could come with a kid and the water splash. Something yeah, simple. We, 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 can re, we can recover the space and take the stairs out and do as far as something, as far as green space in that, in that area. I think that's... I wasn't thinking Italy in terms of the font. You know, just think something very simple. It's very simple. <laughs> but if you really want to do a font, but if you can do that, it just, it just lifts the street a little bit more. You know? And it's great what you did in Fort Pearl, giving us your property basically, and it's great what you're doing here, giving us your property. But if we just sort of push it just a little bit further. So in other words, there's an event that happens there of some kind that is interactive for and interesting to people. Yeah. And it may give you more plaza space Absolutely. to work with as well Absolutely. as providing some interest, point of interest. Absolutely. Maybe there's a plaque on the lower side yeah. that people can look at as they're walking by. Yeah. Um, pause points or something. Yeah. Or something. Yeah. Yeah. So. Just have a cluster of trees in that upper area, you know, that's just yeah. a little bit wider. Yeah. And something happens yeah. there. Yeah. 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 I hear you. Energized yeah. this Correct. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Well, it's good. Okay. Um, well, the fount fountains can be awesome. Uh, I'm. I'm only Are you sure that happened in Zurich? It's called there too. Personally, the, well, I spend a lot of time in Syracuse, and the, one of their main plazas is all fountains, and it was all done in brick, and they had to rebuild it every five years because it, it just it couldn't handle it. That's why you didn't lose it. <coughs> too cold. Uh, well, yeah. water, it'll be a seasonal fountain no matter yeah, what you want absolutely. if it's a fountain because that's how that works. Yeah, yeah. It yeah. really doesn't work that really doesn't work. Well, yeah, it could be a piece of kinetic right. art. It could be, yeah, right. there's a lot of possibilities. Yeah. But the idea that we're creating this really strong pathway and that periodically there should be strong nodes on it. Absolutely, yeah. So yeah. that you can walk from City Hall down to the Crescent Connector and all that. You know, you yeah, know, that's a good idea. Have places to pause along the way. Mm -hmm. Take my group photo and just take that in the back. We'll, we'll yeah. refine that. We'll Only the following. We really I think there's, a lot of, architect and there's, there's probably a lot of better ideas than a fountain. I, I, I'll well, just personally, yeah, well, there's nothing, the with the there's nothing worse than a fountain in the winter time with no water. And you just stare at the thing and it doesn't. Drive, 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 it's terrible. It's it's got water. Water. It it freezes. Freezes. There you go. <laughs> Even worse. <laughs> no offense, Robin. Well, I think you got our, our general message. That's good. Uh, yeah. You know, something happens. Yeah. There. Yeah. 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 I mean, I, I think I think the message, you know, is is with projects like this is it, it the aesthetics of the of the thing are really important, and we have to show in every little detail to to the people who live here and make sure that everybody's happy with what we see. You know, the colors. Um, it's it's especially after this project, it's super important. You know, to make sure that we have as much information as possible so that. Everybody feels feels good about it. It's a great project. Do you think they're going to be here a while longer than us? 
Yeah, yeah, exactly. Any other questions? I do have a question. On the parking garage um, SKP2 sheet, it looks like there's on 21 spaces. Is that the image in the upper right? Um, it, it shows the stairs. Um, I don't know, I'm going to assume that that one square block is an elevator. Is this true? You're going to have an elevator. You're going to have an elevator machine room. You'll have your, your sprinkler room. You'll have your mechanical room and a set of stairs. Okay. So inside the building. You need two exits from that parking garage. Those stairs would serve as the secondary exit okay. out. So I'm, I'm going to see that reflected piece since that's down somewhere. It's kind of coming up. It's inside so the building. It's, it's, in, it's below the building. This is, there you go. So the, the, footprint of the, the only below grade is in the basement of the building itself. Ah, so okay. there's no below grade here. There's surface, second level here. There's below grade below the building. Okay. So it wasn't really feasible to put below grade on the surface or at the main parking lot. We looked at it and just, you know, with the water treatment and everything, it just didn't make sense. All right. We're much now I better at you know waterproofing, keeping this below the building, having that separate from the, the other parking garage. We even looked at going down half a story for this and then half a story up and it just didn't work with the water treatment. So we are we are where we are. Excellent. All right. Anything else? <clears throat> Uh, I guess I should ask if there's anybody in the audience that has any questions for the applicant. Um, John, I agree with you 110%. I look at that elevation and not understand the ins and outs. The uh, renderings would be very helpful. Yes. Um, I would like to request, so when you do the renderings, let's show some of the surrounding buildings so you can see the comparative heights. Fair enough. We can, we can certainly at least walk out so you can get, you know, I don't think we we'll probably be showing a whole lot of detail on them, but like you're saying, comparative height, massing, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay, great. Anybody else? <clears throat> Robin, do you have anything you want to add? No, I think uh, you guys hit the nail in the head. I mean, it's it's just conceptual. Uh, and the file that she's handling the staff notes, it's a shall be provided by the file. So there's a lot of information to take you back to the village engineer and myself. But I think it's coming on. And I think the additional parking is really going to help everybody uh, who wants to park in the village, not just people who live in this Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Do I uh, hear a motion to close the public portion? Uh, public portion. I guess I'll have a close the public portion. Yeah. Motion to close the public portion. Uh, uh, conceptual plan? Yep. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. So, um, do you guys have anything you want to talk about before we vote on this, or are you, are you going to do it the board? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. So. well, one thing I, I want to like, well, because I'm not familiar, most of the parking lots that we have dealt with in the past have been service or underbuilding. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm wondering if there's, because our land bundle code speaks to having parking lot shading and we have all kinds of landscaping options and things and in fact we've talked about gaze uh, gazebo grills or whatever things mm -hmm. and solar panels and things yes, like that's 20% of the parking lot and right two of the three decks are going to be 100% shaded right so they easily be 20% oh um, so it's well this top section here uh, I don't know I, I guess it'd be a matter of well there's one underneath the building and right. There's one underneath the top section. So he's thinking of it all as whole, so 60% of them are. 
66 percent. Well, I'm not going to count the, the one that's under the building because it's under the building. Um, but if this at this above grade will be open to the sun, and we've talked about solar panel gazebos or something in the past, I'm wondering if do we as worth a, asking for. Um, uh, it's going to be more important for the average person uh, to see what the slide elevations are done, how they're done. Agreed. Because when you're walking down the street, you won't see anything up there. Because they've got to have walls high enough to count as, you know, you know they got to be 42 at least inches. 42 inches mm -hmm. high. Right. So you're going to see so they, there structure is plus 42 from, inches. Okay. Yeah. I, I'm concerned about meeting the shade requirement okay. in our regulations. And you just want, you want to apply parking. to the parking deck itself, not to the overall tally. Right, because basically they're they're going to build parking that now has no shade. Right, no shade up, tons complete of shade, shade. Uh, complete shade, and, and I'm going. Does our do our yeah, requirements talk about that upper deck? Because we, we have not done yeah. it underneath says, before. Okay, it just says twenty percent. It just says twenty percent should be shaded, and I want to make sure that we comply, and, and everyone complies. <coughs> do we need to in the future talk about? Because this may become something of the future. Do we need more education as to how garages well, or parking structures of this nature, so that we're familiar? Because our land code will be something that we'll be dealing the with. The other question is, yeah, if we do put the solar canopy on top, what does that do to the elevation of the building? Well, see now, now everyone. I was drawing on mine because the the parking deck elevation. And you can only tell because on the back side of the building elevation, you can see where the little where the connection is, is right. to the right. Yeah. That's the deck. The, the um, walls are going up 42 inches from that. So the people on the second floor of the back of the building are going to be looking out of their kitchen at window. A wall. That, at a wall. Uh, okay. There's going to be cars right in front of them. It's called right. defensible space. They're going to park there in front of them. And it's what, five or six feet? Five separated feet. or something, yeah. right? Yeah. So, uh, I I think we should be careful that the second floor people and the third floor people and the fourth floor people aren't getting stuck with a bunch more stuff to stare at, like the side of you know the solar panels or something like that. Oh. So, I'm kind of okay with not asking them to yeah. put anything up there. I I can't actually recall any parking deck that we have around here that has plantings on one of the upper decks. Like, we don't have any parking lots that have decks. Not in Essex Junction, but other places okay. around Burlington. You wouldn't find anybody that has anything up there. You know, like, we, I was just in um, other places where there are tennis courts and there's basketball and there's, there's stuff that happens on the roof of these things, but that's not what we're proposing here. We're, we're saying... So, I think it's a good question. I'd love to see it stay kind of, you know, whitish, so it reflects the heat a little bit. You know, have cars up there a lot. Um, but I think we're going to get a lot more mileage out of treating whatever the edge is. Like maybe the edge, like Robin said, has some kind of planters or vine potential, or there's something there that lets nature and life and green it just drops down. On each, right. on each level. And, you know, again, it's only a two story. Well, it's really well, one, one story. story. Yeah. And it's, it's not the same height as a, a, a room in a building. Right. It's pretty close because yeah. it looks like it's they yeah, it's walk into the yeah. second floor. So I don't know. They, that's up to them to figure out how that works. But um, I, I think. I just want to make sure that we, you know, they were complying and we're complying by, by encouraging the yeah. correct thing. And I'm going. This is the first time we've had an elevated yeah. parking structure, because yeah. most of ours have been underground <coughs> or surface. Or surface. Yeah. And I just cool. want to know. It's pretty, you know, I mean, they, 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 the rest of the criteria are all ideal. The, it's behind the building, it's totally screened, you can barely see it from anywhere. Yeah. Um, but it does have three sides that will be visible from, from you know, uh, something. And, right. and we want to make sure those yeah. are... The south side is really not going to be visible. Why not? Because there's going to be another building on the other side of that access driveway. 
which will close it all off. Right? And there's vegetation along that side. If you really, if you go onto the roof of the center building and you like squint it to the right, you might see the fall. Okay, so those are great ideas. We should we should definitely look Absolutely. into Absolutely. into you know what sort of things even, we need even to Even if they about. just put a, a, a pergola above the upper level and just try to grow vines on it, something like that. I mean, hey, I was in the one place just this. Last month, well, they, they, could know, have they, they could just do pergolas in a couple of corner bays or something. Yes, and, yeah. and, and that would take care of the percentage. Yeah, yeah. yeah. interesting. Not a bad idea. Okay, we'll let them off on the fountain, but uh, we yeah. have some pergolas. Definitely, right. maybe there's <laughs> definitely let them off. On <laughs> maybe there's a pergola where the fountain used to be. <laughs> used to be. Listen to me. Yeah. Give yeah. it up already. It's only. Uh, I know. That's <laughs> that's that's wrong. <laughs> All right, so uh, are, do I hear a motion to, uh, no. if there's any other? There is other business. <coughs> no, do you want we're not going to just wait. We're finished talking about I'm looking for a motion to, to approve or not approve the conceptual plan. Uh, I make a motion that the conceptual plan uh, be approved as uh, you know, including the stipulations and comments that were made in the staff report and by uh, the meeting. planning commissioner at the meeting. Uh, can you accept a friendly amendment about the, this is, it's shall have an, a, an addition of a fountain? Do we want to have them consider a fountain? Did I type that down? You, Did you put shall in there? You uh, know, yeah. that's because uh, Amber's uh, not here anymore a friendly to catch amendment it. To, to strike the word fountain and include the consider shall. a point of interest. Okay. Yes, that's that's a good catch. Thank you. Okay, so do I hear a second? It second. might be a second. Second. Okay, second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Okay. I mean, do you want to say something? Now, I know you're, you guys are all up in arms about the paint color on the building, so let's talk about that real quick. I just think the black is a bland nothing you've been staring at that building for 30 well, some how, how well, long we haven't been liked it from 30 years it's blue right now it, it, it's, 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 it's gray it's gray blue it was dark it's green was, wasn't okay. it come on what do you are, 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 it's all it's all gray. no gray. no no they're looking at road rescue it's road rescue yeah we're over there that's one yes this one that's pretty I'm it's pretty gray blue it uh, looks like why are you getting green? Okay. Oh, it's green. Road it's rescue's gray. color green. It's gray with brick underneath. It's gray green, actually. I think those colors would look excellent on that building. If anything's going to look better than what it is. That's, that's a good that's point. My, that's, my, <laughs> that's my. That's kind of my point, <laughs> I'm too. I'm sticking with that. I mean, his colors are kind of what? Black and orange and yellow, right? Because of the firebird thing? Yeah. Right. Yes. So, I mean. The whole inside of the, uh, the dining area is red. Well, he's, he's got this red and black sign out front right now. That's what I was okay. saying. Why wouldn't he do a red? It is why, why wouldn't he do red and black? And, instead of the yellowy orange? Yeah. I mean, I, I would encourage the stripe to be a little bigger. Okay. Um, I would encourage the stripe to be more consistent with the sign. So red? The, 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 the firebird red for the stripe? I think that, well, yeah. especially since you just told us the interior is right as well, of the restaurant. Don't you it, think it that was? It does they have a way to go with fly orange. Um, I just think you like to. Well, I don't have anything against orange. It's just that uh, it can look, I, I it don't really look good, too, if it's the right orange. It could be. It's going to look great. I, I agree that painting it something, you know, but, but the black just feels... So if you make the stripe wider, you have less of the black. I have a little less black. I yeah. just don't get the black. Like, do you want to double? Do I want you want a big stripe, a big band of black? Do you, the well, of my, the, do you want to double the width of the stripe? If you double, yeah. Do you want to put in three stripes, all the same width, <laughs> and just have them closely? Closer to all together. To we, don't, we don't want to look like we don't want it to look like the Italian flag. <laughs> it's been serious. No, it's just been serious. You know, firebirds all the way along. I, I, know, I think I, that's not really. My no, if the if the yellow stripe gets bigger, but it's still less than half, well, and it, and it's a, a th th that's that would be a stripe then. Double would be. 
more than enough. Okay. Somewhere between yeah, what it's showing I, I and double what it's showing. I agree with that. And I mean, it's but, there's a red stripe over there now. With, you can't. He, he there, can't do yellow. Gonna, so he can't. Well, let's just talk about the black for a minute. So you've got black across the top. You've got the storefront elements, which are dark bronze. Did he just put those in, or mm -hmm. those the same? Did. Yeah. So those, those are dark door, bronze, yeah. which is fine. Um, there's a band of material between the overhead doors, which is, is that a door? There is a door between the overhead doors. Is that the door? The and, door? No, there's two doors. There's the one into the old office, and there's another door between the two yeah, uh, uh, garage doors. It's hard to read, but it is. There's yeah. no two so yeah. I guess I would be tempted to make some kind of a statement with with the vertical door element because it's it looks like it's at the moment the same color that the the top. Well, I think he's going to have a glass door there. He's going to have a glass door. He's changing out a sure glass door so he gets more light inside. And is it just the way the sun hits it, or is that a mill finish aluminum door going into the office? That's the cooler. That's the cooler door. Right? That, that he's got his his cooler in there. Um, it's hitting the back at your. That, that, that's that's the original. That's the original door. It's, it looks like on the, the inside. Gray. No, the one in the, the office. Oh, okay. Shiny, okay. That's shiny bright, bright door. door. Yeah, that's the original door. Yeah. Is that what's happening with that? He hasn't proposed anything for that. Kind of. Stands out like a proverbial sort of thing. Um, anyway, I I would I want to see the paint. Anything that's not pre-finished, like the the new storefront colors, ought to be integrated into some. Right. So anything that you can paint, if the top is black, give me a reason to understand why any of the other colors go there. And what about painting the brick gray? Is that show painting the brick? The bottom one is gray. It's showing the painting gray. I don't want it to gray. Yeah, it is a lot of gray. What do you need to know? Nobody. There's no one ever reminded me. Sorry, I'm too far away. Oh. Mm. So let, let John I'd say I, that there. Uh, what I, my point was if you just make the stripe a little bit wider, double it, like you said. That would do a lot for it. I don't have a problem with the black and the yellow. I, mean, I think the gray looks good. It's 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 different. And all right, so the uh, so I think one of the reasons he's painting the, the brick, John, is there's been so many modifications to the brick. Yeah, I saw that. Well, well hides, that hides that hides the fact that it's not consistent. I see nothing in this lower thing that tells me Firebird in any way, shape, or form. If I was a fan and a patron. Uh, or a neighbor of the current Firebird. I think he's going to have a sign on the building, as well as the sign. Why do you have to disguise everything? Well, I mean, uh, my point is, there's no, that's, it's trendy and it's modern, but it no longer has any connection to his current business. And the sign doesn't look the same. You didn't. You decided you didn't like the old sign. I am trying to get into All right. So inside. never mind. I got two points because one is we we don't really need to worry about what his old business was. This is a proposal coming to us in our village center. We have design control. We have color approval, etc. Is it appropriate? Right. That's the bottom line. Is is whatever they're proposing appropriate? His you know, business decisions notwithstanding, is is that image going to be appropriate for the center of mm -hmm. okay. five corners That's a good point. Uh, so, when we're done? And, uh, uh, you know, it's an odd building. It's going to stand out anyway. Yeah. It's one story. It's an old garage. There will yeah. be vegetation will this, in front of the building. I just find that, oh. to this you know, all this gray and black. So he's ripping up the kinda, cut? No. He's putting I, I, don't, I don't think okay. it's going to... Oh, by the way, he, I suggest he puts a chalk art of pergola across the front of the building. Yeah, that's a good idea. And at, at the base of the pergola, I showed him how to build um, plant, quite large planters around it with you know, insulation board in. And I suggested uh, trumpet vine because it's very hardy. And the paws in the winter sound like yeah, maracas so when they hit together in the winter. Do we end up seeing, uh, after you got done coaching, that we get to see what's really going to be there, or is this? Uh, 
Yeah, I asked him for pictures when he decides what the purple's going to look like. So he is doing the purple. He is doing the purple. So that's going to break up the color in the front. Yeah, after, once the trumpet by goes, you're not going to even see it. All right, so I'm, I'm seeing two, at least two potentials here for signs on the building. He's got a green, green in the middle of the two bay doors, plus a green. No, bay that's a door as well. We never two bay doors. I guess uh, unless uh, there's so much brick in the in the village already, and it's such a normal historic component, I'm 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 more in favor of seeing it stained brick than having it painted gray. Uh, my feeling is that would. Have to make it a little. Yeah, after meeting, we should move around and walk around. Yeah. But, um, that might I, help. Yeah. But because there's there's a lot of things that are going on. Over the there. sign on the building idea, I don't think is necessary at all. Why would you have that awesome sign out there that's already there? You just changed. It's already done. Why do you need a sign on the building? Well, we can't mandate the sign, can we? No. No, I'm just saying as part of as part of the as part of breaking up. Well, what I wanted to do, and I'll show you when we look inside. <laughs> He's raised the cooking area. Yeah. That's quite high. So it's inside. And I want him to put it on the face of the raised area inside. It'll be sort of cool and funky. We don't have anything to say about that. It's no. But we can take a look. I've got a key for the building. We can walk through it. Um, I'm not opposed to having a sign. Now. What are those two uh, green boxes that are kind of right in the... Why don't we do this? Why don't we close the meeting and we'll go over and look closer and then we can... Okay. Yeah, that's Because I can't really see it from here and I keep walking past it. Yeah, that's fine. All right. All right, All right, so we're not quite ready to render a determination on yet. We're going to table it until we... Is that a play on words? Render? Yeah. yeah. Until we um, have a more... Right, so we, of, uh, we'll add in the, in the minute notes that we will table discussion on what colors we use for Firebird and the site visit. Yeah. Okay? How much when is it going to paint it? Or All right. Want to paint it? Any uh, you probably want to paint it quite soon. I think if... if People don't mind. Uh, a couple times in the past, John and I have sort of met and discussed colors for people who weren't actually coming in for an application. It was just they wanted to do something they're building. If we all want to meet, that's fine too. But it, it, this is Dan Dealey for John. So it's more than just that color looks pretty to me. I do it off, often compliment him, so. Um, but I mean, if you want. Well, let me, how about we do this? I, I would be okay accepting the black and the stripe and not saying okay paint the brick until further. Well, I, I want you to walk around the building with me. You might see why he thought about doing that. It might become more obvious. Well, why don't I make the band red? There's some other brick color behind red. No, I, I don't care about the color. I'm just saying that. I do. No, for this conversation, I don't care. I, I just think I'd rather. Let's. Get to the point where we think, yes, he should paint it, and then let's talk about the color later. Fair right. Do I hear a motion? No point talking about a color when you're going to tell me you can't paint it. Do I hear a motion to close the meeting? Um, I have a question. Do we have do we have a next scheduled meeting coming up? And we don't have, do not have one for August 15th. We do not. Okay. We're going to have a couple coming quickly, but we don't have one for August 15th. Okay. You're not going away again, are you? No, I'm, I'm on the town planning commission now. Maybe on Thursdays, he, he there's this other one from our normal meetings, but we're in the middle of, of uh, maybe a couple special meetings. And I know, that's your, another Thursday. That's so your so secondary so. obligation. You, you, I, I, I agree, <laughs> but I, I don't want to have to pick if I don't have to. Oh, no, then no, you would be picking. Yeah. Okay, all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah like that answer. Okay. Sometimes I suppose we don't have anything. Yeah, as of now, I'm not going to be around uh, much in August. I'm gone to, for the next week and a half on vacation. Well, that's it. After August, you're most of it. Okay. Yep. Nice stuff. September then. Okay. And we are going to, um, Greg Duggan has asked Dana Hanley to try and organize, I can't remember, but there's two or four joint meetings a year between the two planning commissions. And the way we're going to try and do it is, if the town planning commission has a meeting, then we'd go on the night of their meeting, and then they'd come on the night of our meeting. Uh, we do not. We should. We should be doing them all over there. If we're gonna have a joint meeting because the room's so much bigger and it's a lot easier to do that. There's still only ten people. It, it's a. 
it's, it's a lot better over there. Yes. <laughs> Go to the venue that works best. That's my point. Sure. Okay. Do I hear a motion to close the meeting? So moved. <laughs> Did I hear a second? Thank you. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Thank you. Have a good night.